Hello, this is a tutorial for helix knitting, which is a process of creating these delightful little single row stripes in two or more colours, in this case just two, when working in the round. Uh, this is the Allial hat, which is one of my patterns available on Ravelry. It's a cabled hat, but it's not the cables we're looking at today. It's just the method of creating these wonderful spiralling candy stripes. Uh, the joy of helix knitting is that unlike any other type of knitting in the round that involves colour work, there's no jog at the start of the round. These stripes literally just spiral round and round, continually around the hat, uh, one looping over the top of the other in one sinuous, continuous uh, stream. And that's partly to do with the fact that knitting in the round is not actually knitting in a circle, you are in fact knitting in a spiral and these colours just spiral around each other rather like the stripes on a barber's pole. Uh, so how is it done? It's really, really simple. There's just a couple of things to bear in mind. I've got a smaller version of the Allial hat here. Uh, it's uh, actually just almost like a sock. It may even become a sock, who knows. Uh, and I'm just about to start uh, working on the uh, the the helix portion of it. So this is just standard knitting in the round and I've happened to have done two colours of striping and I'm getting to the stage now where I want to add the yellow colour. In this case it's already joined because I didn't cut the yarn after working that yellow stripe further down. If yours is a new colour and not yet joined, literally just tuck the end in the work, hold the yarn and start knitting. That's the joy of working this technique. Uh, it really is very, very simple with no specific technical knowledge necessary at all. So in my case, I'm just going to start now working with that yellow yarn. And I'm going to knit and knit and knit. Now for using just two colours, I'm going to continue and complete this whole uh, round with the yellow yarn and I'm not going to do anything with this pink. The pink has not been cut, the pink from the round below has just been left hanging there and we're going to pick that up when we get back to that point in the round. So bear with me, I'm just going to knit my way around here and I'll join you in a moment. As you can see I've now worked all the way round with the yellow yarn back to the end of the row or the round or the beginning of the next one of course. Uh, ignore these uh, little pink stitches here, I'm doing some slip stitches uh, for a little bit of patterning here so assume that that's one plain yellow round and we're back to the beginning. Now as I said this pink yarn from the row below has just been left here hanging. And all we do in order to uh, continue the helix knitting process is start knitting with that pink yarn. Leave the yellow one where it is, leave it hanging there, and then continue knitting with the pink. And that's essentially all you do. You continue working round with one round of one colour, followed by one round of the next. And you'll see already under my needles here that the single row stripes start to build themselves up. It's really important to pay attention to two things. One, at the start of the round do not twist these two yarns around each other. This is not a form of stranded knitting, you do not need to do it. We want those spirals to be continuous all the way round so we leave them unwrapped and untwisted and uninterrupted. That's really important. The other thing to note is that the last stitch of the previous round, in this case this tiny little pink stitch here, will have a propensity to get pulled really really tight if you're not careful. The way to get round this is to leave the last stitch of the round and the first stitch of the new round very, very loose, much looser than you think you might want to. Now there's a very good reason why that happens. Every uh, stitch I knit into, even though this yellow stitch was created on the row below, when I work into it, I open it up with my needle. It's just the act of putting your needle through it opens that stitch up and keeps nice even tension. Then when you go into the next one, you open that one up as well. That doesn't happen at the beginning of the round here with uh, helix knitting because the stitch already has another row of, of 
coloured work on top of it. It's already been worked into on the previous round and isn't going to be affected when you get round to it a second time. I know that's a really complicated concept to get your head around, but trust me, it just is true. So it's really important to leave those first and last stitches of the round really, really loose. They will tighten up by themselves as you get round again, uh, but you don't want to leave them at your normal tension. You certainly don't want to do what you would normally do, uh, or some people do at the beginning of a magic loop or a new round, and pull those that first stitch really tight to get rid of any ladders. It will have the opposite effect. It won't give you ladders, but what it'll do is it'll make that first stitch so tight it'll disappear and your transition from spiral to spiral will not be smooth. Right, I've done a few rounds now and you can really see the pattern starting to emerge. Uh, this is the edge of the sock where, because uh, it is going to be a sock, there's no getting away from that now. Let me just pull this out so you can see a little bit more clearly. This is where the start of the rounds is. And although I haven't quite got my tension right, because it's a little bit loose there, I'm leaving it just, I'm being over cautious and leaving it too loose. Can you see how the, the pink line across here just flows directly from one round to the other with absolutely no sense of a jog at all, just completely beautifully smooth lines. And just to prove, I mean, you can see this is where I cast on, so that definitely is the join. And then around the back as well where I'm magic looping, exactly the same. The lines and the spirals just move effortlessly uh, and continue all the way round. I just wanted to show you exactly what I meant when I said you need to leave things looser than you might think. By the time I knit round, can you see, this is the stitch I've just knitted, this yellow one, because uh, I've just finished a yellow round. And this is the one below it. Now it will, by this point, have dragged itself out into being very, very... Uh, loose indeed. And that's sort of okay. And I'll just show you kind of what I do to get into it. I'll just go there and what I'll do is as I pick up the pink yarn I just want to make sure I put it tightly enough so that that pink stitch just becomes the size of all the other stitches. Then I'm very very careful as I knit uh, with the yarn that I don't pull anything tight. I do not want that pink stitch disappearing. There you can see, there's that pink stitch. See how small it already is? So you really don't want to go any tighter than that. And then you can continue as you were. So that's really all there is to it. Remember when you join the new yarn, just to keep that last stitch nice and loose with no tension on it whatsoever. And then knit one round drop the old yarn, pick up the new and continue. And there we are, Helix Knitting.